it's back and it's about to get even more mangled. This is going to be a DIY cable cam build, but we're gonna take it to the next level and build it remote control. So it's gonna be a remote control cable cam that's gonna be built off of the platform of an RC car. And when I say built off the platform, I really just mean built using the components of an RC car. So this one is one we used, we uh, put a GoPro on top of it, then we put a GoPro and a gimbal on top of it. We've done all kinds of stuff with this car. And uh, now we're gonna harvest its organs. We're gonna take the motor out of it, the control board out of it, and use all the electronics from it to build our remote control cable cam. And the thing that's great with using RC cars like this as a platform for projects like this is they're cheap. So you can get an RC car like this for about 35, 25 to 40 bucks online. It'll come with a decent motor, a decent controller, and it'll all just work together. And then we can use that motor to actually drive whatever it is that we're trying to do. Now, I'm not quite sure how the gear reduction of the motor works. Hopefully, the gear reduction is all done inside of the motor. If it's not, we may have to find a different motor to, uh, to drive this or find a way of um, stealing the gear reduction out of the RC car. So there's the motor out of the car. Now, it's not a geared motor, which might lead us to a little bit more of a challenge trying to get the uh, the speed of this motor down and get it torquey enough to actually drive our um, our cable cam. But for now, we'll start with this. And then if we have to, we can always go and get ourselves a gear motor um, later on down the road. The next thing we're gonna dig out is the control board here. Now, since we don't need the servo, we can in fact just unplug this, the, uh, the four wires that go to the servo and there it is. So this one was just held in with a little piece of double-sided sticky tape. Um, of course, you're probably not going to be using exactly the same remote control car platform that I'm going to be using, so how yours works will probably differ. But there it is. Receiver here with the motor controller and everything built on. That's what these are. These are big MOSFETs that control the, uh, the motor. And then we've got the battery and the motor. We left the servo on the remote control car. And we can see here, if we grab the remote control, turn it on, just power on the motor, red to red, black to black. Not that it really matters. If we wanted to reverse the direction, we could always just wrote and flip it. Plug in our battery, like so. Power it on, and, oh, sorry, power it on. Now it's just time to build a thing that'll slide across a rope. This is the rope that I'm hoping to use. This is old six mil main sheet off uh, of a laser, but this is kind of the diameter. This diameter, it's pretty good. I think it should work quite well. And then my hope here is that I can get this gear motor to sit vertically up against the rope and actually using the gear that's attached to it, I will be able to uh, put I have a lot of grip on the rope, so I just need something on the other side of it, some kind of ball bearing or some kind of roller that's gonna push the rope into the gear motor and make it, well, run along the rope. And then we need some hangers, that something that's gonna hold the, uh, the whole contraption up onto the rope. So two steps there. Uh, I guess first is gonna be, well, where do I wanna start? Let's start with a uh, tensioners, I think that's going to kind of dictate how our whole contraption works. The other option, of course, is to mount this uh, vertically, <coughs> or sorry, horizontally, so it sits on top of the rope like this, but the, the whole thing hangs this way, and that means that maybe the weight of the whole device or how I hang the two rollers would allow it to, uh, would be enough force to, to keep this up. I wonder if that's what I should do. Hmm. Let's go find some rollers or some hangers or something that uh, will roll on the rope and then we'll go from there. The Empire of Dirt delivers two Harkin ball bearing surface mount pulleys. All right. So I think there's a plan starting to come together here. These will be mounted onto our trolley and they'll be what actually keeps the trolley suspended in the air. So this is this is up and this is down. So these will sit up here. And then 
we'll mount this motor either, uh, it's gonna rub. Maybe, maybe we end up mounting it like this and then it's just the pressure of these up and down, this mounted between them that actually gets this thing running. I finally found some fasteners that fit together. Don't worry about the fact that it's chromed on stainless, but whatever, it'll be fine. I'm gonna put these here. I'm gonna put the motor up the middle and hopefully that is about the right amount of, uh, of tension and support. So there's our pulleys mounted. Now it is gonna hang a little bit off kilter just because of the way the weight's gonna be distributed right now. But once we go ahead and mount our gimbal on here, we should be able to kind of correct for that and our placement of our gimbal should uh, counteract anything we do up top with weight distribution. So there's where this rope is gonna sit. Now, I don't think we wanna deflect it too much to get it up onto the pulley, otherwise it's gonna put too much force onto the pulley. Uh, maybe. So the first step with this is gonna be to mount our bracket, our little L bracket here, onto the bottom of our motor bracket. To do that, we're gonna use the original screws. There's the bracket mounted. <sighs> Took way more time to find fasteners than actually get it mounted, but that's neither here nor there. Same routine as before. Line up the bracket. Mark the holes, drill the holes, and mount. So the next step here is just gonna be to put the battery on, put our controller on, what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna, well, we always wanted to mount a gimbal on it. But basically what that means is we're gonna have to mount the gimbal underneath the motor here so that it balances out the weight of the motor. So we're gonna take this, heat up this uh, material, and then we're gonna bend it. We're just gonna heat up that area that we want, uh, where right around where we want our bend to be. Once it's hot, just put down our heat gun, get a hard edge corner. Then it's just a matter of grabbing something to hold it that shape while it cools. So you get it bent to whatever shape you want and then just put it in something to hold it to that shape. It doesn't have to be perfect because the gimbal will take care of all of kind of whatever is wrong with it or whatever angle it hangs off. But this means then that we can line up the gimbal underneath the motor, which means that it should hold the whole thing pretty vertical plus the weight of the gimbal on the camera down low is going to mean that everything, um, well, there's more weight low, so it'll probably hang more level. You know what? That is pretty level. So now we're gonna mount on our receiver and our controller and, well, we're gonna go string her up outside and give it a try. All right, I think we are uh, ready for testing. So let's see here, this is, Powered up. The switch is on. The controller is on. I think if anything, we may not have enough torque to make this actually work, but let's go test it out. All right, so here's where we're at. This seems to be working very, very well. It slides, um, well, almost too well, but there's a problem. The tensioning system that I was planning to use that allowed me to like pull this rope up and get it on top of, uh, of the gear there, well, that's not gonna work. And the reason is because the amount of tension I need to put on this rope to, uh, to get it as long as I want and get it as straight as I want means there's not nearly enough slack to get this up onto this gear. And if I do, it's just gonna bend the whole motor down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna notch out this bit, drop the whole thing down so that the gear just kind of rests on top of the rope. And noticing how well this slides, I think that'll be uh, more than enough contact to send this thing zipping along this cable cam. Things are looking pretty good. 
I'm quite excited about how this is coming. And I think that is about the perfect amount of deflection. It's just gonna kind of skim along the, uh, the gear there. So I think we're gonna go ahead with that. And then I'm just gonna drill a second hole in the back here for our second bolt, just in there. And uh, then we'll mount it up and take it back outside and give it another try. What I'm realizing is that it's really important to get this motor aligned just perfectly. So what I'm actually gonna do is take these two bolts out, cut notch or like longer, elongate these holes so that they go up and down. So it gives me a little bit of play so I can come out here, loosen off these bolts, align the motor just perfectly, and then put the whole thing back together. I think this should be the trick. As I slide the dolly along the rope there, you can see that the wheel is spinning, but it's not deflecting the rope or putting any undue stress on the motor. So it's still riding on the, on the wheel bearings here and that rope is still being held straight. So I think if we go and turn the remote controller on now, this should work. Powering on this. Powering on our controller. Wow. Well guys, I'm impressed. It's all finished. It turned out way better than I had any right to hope for. I am super, super happy with how it came out. The gimbal on the bottom of it when I've been reviewing footage is a must. You just get this silky smooth cable cam style dolly shot and what's really cool is that it's limited by basically how much rope you're willing to buy. I um, really want to take one of these up, string it up in a forest and chase someone biking with it because I think that would be an amazing use case for it. So uh, I'm gonna hit up some of my friends who mountain bike and see if we can't go up and set this thing up and just try it out because I think some of the footage we'll be able to get with it would be rad. So if you're into mountain biking or you're into any other kind of sport where a cable cam chasing you through the forest or something like that would be an awesome shot then you should totally build one of these because the remote control side of it is cheap it's an easy project because it uses parts that we harvested from a cheap rc car you don't need anything fancy the motors are already torquey enough a couple of pulleys a little piece of plastic to build it on it's like a dollar fifty cutting board from ikea these blocks are probably not that cheap but i, I the whole project probably costs less than $100 plus a gimbal and lots of people who are into filmmaking already have a gimbal. It doesn't have to be a GoPro gimbal on here. It could be any kind of gimbal that uh, for whatever kind of camera or a cell phone gimbal or whatever, you could hang it on here and the weight isn't critical because the whole thing supported by those two pulleys, it means that all the motor has to do is provide lateral movement. So you're probably gonna get a little bit slower acceleration if you put more weight on it, but uh, other than that, it shouldn't be that affected. Anyway guys, I'm gonna go have some fun shooting some video with this thing. And you should definitely build one because it's a lot of fun and an absolutely awesome project. Overall it didn't take me too long to build. Uh, I think probably four hours start to finish if you wanted to make it a lot cleaner and a lot nicer and you had access to a maybe a laser cutter or a CNC or something, you could do a really beautiful job building one of these, but it, you don't have to. Quick and dirty like this, four or five hours and a hundred bucks for a hardware components and electronic components, and you're done. A super easy project, totally worth checking out. The footage you get from it is stunning as long as you uh, put some kind of gimbal down here on the bottom of it. But guys, this was a lot of fun to build. It was an awesome project, and I really think you should go build one because it's an incredibly powerful filmmaking tool, and if you're out chasing buddies biking or something like that, this is gonna give you some absolutely amazing footage. So, check out some of the sample footage I got, and, um, well, let me know if you build one. If you do, or you got any questions or comments about it, you can leave those down in the video description. If you want close-up photos of this, I put them up on the Facebook page. That's linked down in the video description if you want to see a little bit more detail on any of the components or anything like that. If they're not on Facebook, send me an email or send me a, 
a comment down below and I can send you some close up information if you're trying to build one of these and getting stuck. Most of all guys, until next time, thank you very, very much for watching.